Hello. Today I'm going to talk about data and control flow coupling, which is one of the key techniques that LDRA provides to um, facilitate DO 178C verification. Data and control flow coupling is another form of coverage. It's much like the other forms of coverage, but it, it has to do with how data and control flow elements interact with each other. So to show you a little bit about it, let's, let's start by collecting coverage. And, and to collect coverage, I always start with build import. Build, build import is how you bring code into Aldera. And so what I'm gonna do is pull up one of our standard examples, the cache register, and take a look at um, what's covered and what's not covered, and then add data and control flow coupling coverage as well. So if I go ahead and perform my build import, I find the files that are associated with my set, and then I can quickly go into TB Vision and uh, perform my coverage analysis. I'll do this by select analysis, and I'll just do all the steps that I need. My main static analysis elements, generate instrumentation, build, execute, dynamic coverage, and data coupling coverage. So when I do start, all of these elements will be queued off. And in a few seconds later, we'll, we'll complete our, our static analysis first, and then all of the other phases of analysis required to perform our coverage activities. And when we finish, we will first look at statement and branch coverage. And then we'll, we'll see how those play into MCDC and data and control flow coverage. So once our application has built with instrumentation, we can perform a random shopping exercise with an R and then quit out and uh, then perform our coverage analysis and go to our results view. And once uh, all of our nodes refresh, we can go ahead and do view coverage analysis. And we can see that from this random shopping exercise, we have a considerable amount of coverage. We have 85% statement, 63% branch coverage. I can go ahead and right click and look at my coverage report and I can see all of this information in, 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 in report form as well and click through and see all of the lines were, that were covered and also uh, take a look at any lines that weren't covered, and zoom into the specifics of what cases were covered and, and weren't covered. So that's great. Statement, branch, MCDC. So MCDC looks at cases where you have an if statements with multiple conditions and make sure that you, you, you accounted for e each of those conditions. And that's a great place to start. And that's where DO 178 has you go for levels A, B, and C, where level C, you're looking at statement coverage, level B, branch coverage, and level A, MCDC coverage. But there's another form of coverage that is also very important, and that's, that's what we're gonna look at here. So we can see this graphically first, but it's also important to see in report form. If I look at my coverage pass-fail call graph, so in this case, I'm highlighting nodes that have been covered as green, and nodes that have not been covered as red. I can find some nodes and I can zoom in and take a, a, a quick look. And I can find some nodes like this one I find is a really interesting one. Because if you look at it, it's part of this CSCI, cash register.c, but it's called from outside of it. So it's not exercised in, in this unit. So even if I had 100% statement and branch coverage of this CS CSCI and this CSCI, how do I account for the call? How do I make sure that I am calling from user interface parse to cache register key? And that is what data and control flow coupling provides. So if, if I look into this in report form, again, the graphics are great, but uh, the reports are even better because there's something you can show your certification authority. I'll pull up TB reports and I can take a look at um, in DO 178, level A coverage. <coughs> and here I can see um, my data and control flow coupling. Now, what, what does this mean? If I, if I focus in on that, that specific routine, we're talking about something in cache register that is called from, from user interface. 
Um, so those calls are all, um, they're all displayed one, one after another here. In fact, I can go take a look at user interface and I can see very specifically from this CSCI to that CSCI, only 15 calls and four of those are covered. Now, what does that mean in, in a very precise terms? Well, that means that in user interface parse, there are a number of routines such as cache register key um, that are called from user interface to cache register that are not covered. And so this is a great way to check that your requirements-based tests are exercising, not just the code in question, but the connections between the modules. And so that's what this cache register key is. I can click through on it and I can see that, hey, Here's my call, user interface parse, call to cache register key. The call happens on line 93 and it is, that couple is not covered. So that's call coupling coverage. And data coupling coverage is similar. So if we look at that routine again, and we take a look at cache register key, we will see that there are connections, again, between user interface to cache register specifically what the key is, and based on what that key is, I have uh, variable amounts of coverage of the variables outlined in the routine. So I've got a routine state active, and I've got uh, various coverage associated with that. So how do, I, how, do I, how do I solve this problem? Well, data and controlful coupling has outlined that I haven't completely exercised the call couples and I haven't completely exercised my data. And so if I go back into, into um, TB Vision and go ahead and execute dynamic coverage, data coupling coverage, this time, instead of random shopping, which exercises a specific functionality, I will start a shopping session and then I will enter some barcodes And it doesn't, it doesn't matter really what I'm entering here. I'm just exercising some functionality that is different than what I exercised before. And specifically, the functionality that I'm exercising is the functionality to parse the key, the keystrokes related to, um, related to the, you know, what, what, what I'm typing in related to the barcode. So that, that's why. I specifically went through this process. And then I can end my, my process. My barcodes were unsuccessful, so I ended up with the unknown barcodes. I can quit out, let my control coupling coverage finish up, and then I can view and look at my coverage again. And I can see, hey, I, I've got a little bit more coverage. I can look at that graphically as well, that coverage pass fail call graph, and it, I'll uh, close and reopen it. And I can see now, if I zoom in, that cash register key routine has been ex exercised at least in some, uh, some states. And I can take a look at that in terms of data and control flow coupling as well. So going back to my reports, and I'll look at the DO178B level A reports, pull them up again, and I can see that if I go look at my control flow coupling and my data coupling, let's look at the control coupling, and I can see that now that call of those calls between user interface.c and cache register.c, I've gone from four to eight of those calls exercise. So that's great, I've got some improvements in coverage. And if I go very specifically here, I can see that I have now covered some of the calls that parse the keystrokes. I haven't necessarily covered the cars that parse the barcodes because, hey, I didn't enter the right kind of barcode, but I did parse that call between user interface parse and cache register C. And so now that control couple shows up as covered. Similarly, I can see that this data has been exercised. If I look at my data coverage graph, I can see that 
I have exercised all of the data related to this functionality. I have entered in a keystroke in both active state and not active state in all of those data elements, all of the keys and, and variations of those keys ha have been covered through the declaration, reference, and disposal. So that's what data and control full coupling gives you. It gives you a way to make sure that not just each line of your system has been executed, but the connections between the modules have been exercised. And from a DO-178B perspective, this is an important part of the overall, the overall um, coverage exercise. If we take a look at our tables, we can see that table A7, verification of process results related to 6.4.4D specifically indicates the test coverage of data and control flow coupling. And this is strongly indicated for levels A and B and still in indicated for level C. Uh, so for all of those levels, you should consider not just what your statements are, not just what your decisions are, but how the pieces fit together. And that's what data and control flow coupling gives you.